To never have considered losing, as if to win was by your choosing. Hello, I'm Ryan, and well, we're not quite doing the video I was hoping we'd do, but we are doing a video I think we ought to do, and that is looking back at the extraordinary display by Serbia in the Olympic semi-finals against Team USA. The Avengers, as they are being called, uh, I think they've previously have been, you know, all these other names to do with them, you know, yourself. I think we had three iterations of Dream Team, if I recall, and there was the Redeem Team, and heaven knows what else. But basically, the key point is, it was the strongest possible lineup the USA could feel. There was no excuses about players pulling out this, that, whatever. This was the best possible lineup available to the US. And the team came this close to beating them. And I'm going to discuss why. Uh, I'm going to discuss mostly the positives, obviously. I will get a little bit into how USA managed to pull out the victory towards the end. But this is mostly about really what it takes to beat America, essentially. And, uh, you know, to beat the very best. And why we should be hopeful uh, and all that. So let's get to the to the first key reason Serbia came this close to winning. So this is from later, realizing I should have said this earlier, but we need to get our subs up. So please subscribe. It really, really, really helps. Thank you. And back to the video. Yeah, the half court was just so absolutely vital. I mean, they dictated the tempo. They knew the USA's entire game, not entire game, but an enormous amount of their game was built out of transition about being able to control tempo. Serbia's utter control of tempo, essentially forcing it into a half court versus half court game for the vast majority of the encounter. Like there was very, very few uh, uses really of real transition play from the Americans at all. And so that was an enormous plus for Serbia throughout this game. Like Pezic, knew what he was doing, came into it, had an idea, and said, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do it. It is the way to beat the Americans. So, some of this, by the way, most of my rationale here is going to be incredibly simple, because a lot of it is fundamental basketball, but simple doesn't mean easy. You've got to execute this, and Pezic found the right rotations, the right way to use his players to essentially be able to do that, to dictate, to control, and to basically set the rules of engagement. So yeah, this one is a bit more fudged, but it, it is still relevant. Like if we look at the minutes, not so much for Bogey as it is, although Bogey did still play among his highest minutes in the knockout rounds, uh, it is, is for Joker. Like Joker played 31 minutes in the opening game against USA, but he played in, in the low 20s in the other two games. He was deliberately being kept fresh. This is an issue we've seen with quite a few superstars at tournaments in recent years, most notably Luke Doncic with uh, Slovenia's teams where he's been running really insane minutes in early round games and you're seeing it cost his team come the knockout stages. So Pezic was tactical, did the trade-off, kept Jokic at relatively low minutes early on and then obviously ran him hard with some really really high minutes like he was high 30s in both this game and the quarterfinal with Australia now obviously there was the overtime at Australia uh, but uh, so that did factor it a bit if you'll only look at the flat 40 in fact Jokic did play more in this game than he did against the Aussies and this was deliberate it was get the absolute most out of Nikola Jokic time when you're going to use him bogey as well again I think actually if you adapt for the Australia game it's about the same minutes wise but don't hold me to that but uh, I again amongst his highest minutes of the tournament not an accident while still going 10 deep in the rotation uh, there was only two players who didn't get in out of the Serbian 12 in that game he chose to go deep and it was smart it was useful now, are there things he'd probably want to go back again and change? Yeah, I think he'd like to have used a bit more Alexa Abramovich. But I'm not the guy who nearly just beat the greatest team in basketball in terms of talent available uh, in, in, in the Olympics. Svetislav Pezic did. If Svetislav Pezic feels that was the way to use Alexa Abramovich, I'm not arguing with him right now. He did the best possible job I think could have been done in his position. Like, yeah, of course there's things that'll come back, but in terms of player rotation, I'm not disputing what Pezic did. I think he did a great job. He realized tournament play is not about every win in group stage stuff. It's about being in the best place to get gold. He did what was required to have his Serbia team in the best place to beat the USA in the semifinals and be in the best position to get gold. So Chuck Cooperstein, a uh, big Mavs cover, obviously, he brought it up that, yeah, they didn't play, he doesn't do this with the Warriors, why is he doing it with the USA? Exactly, Chuck, why is he doing it with the USA? That's what's bizarre to me. So, 
Like, for those who don't know, Steve Kerr knows how to run a half-court-based offense because he does it with the Golden State Warriors, including with some of the players that were in this, like, you know, Steph Curry, who saved him, and previously with Kevin Durant, uh, who he won two championships with. And somehow, everything we saw with, a obviously, a weaker squad in Manila was repeating itself in front of me last night. It was insane to watch, like, absolutely stupid. Uh, like, you know, so reliant on transition and getting frustrated when they couldn't get transition opportunities because of course Serbia were going to foul in transition. It was, you know, anyone could see that a mile away that was going to happen. And also just not knowing how to manage FIBA bigs. Like, you've got to understand what the role of your five is at this. You brought in Joel Embiid literally for this purpose. And, like, Embiid had a good game, don't get me wrong. But still, stylistically, it just looked like Steve Kerr has learned nothing from his experience in Manila. Uh, and it's just bizarre to me that, like, yeah, yeah USA's probably still going to win gold. But, like, wow. It's just, change it up. Like, you had training camp, you had prep games. You had time to install a few tweaks to the system where here's how we win if a team tries to force it into a half-court game or here's how we make them really be punished for hitting us, you know, when they're trying to go transition. You find ways to make it harder for the teams to do the obvious things you know who they're going to try and do to stop you. And again, the FIBA big thing. Like, we knew the USA had a problem with that. Again, Embiid came in to solve that problem. But it wasn't just going to be a plug-in Joel and it's fine. Unfortunately, Steve Kerr seems to have taken the approach of just plug in Joel and it's fine. Joel, Joel sorry, and it's fine. Uh, and that's just baffling. And the best part, of course, was that Sveta Pezic saw it a mile away and, you know, adapted brilliantly to it. So now we get to the sad part. I mean, there's a couple of things. Um, some people are going to say the refs. There were certainly some very, very questionable calls. I'm not going to dispute that. I don't think that was the decisive factor on the whole, to be honest. There was a couple of things. One um, was, you know, Steph Curry was amazing, obviously. But you got to, you know, I'm not going to say one USA player going God mode was an enormous factor, uh, especially as because I'm one of the people who defends how Carmelo Anthony played in that 06 loss to Greece. Uh, no, I don't think you can put it down to that because all also Serbia would have been factoring in one US player at least is going to go God mode. Like they would have been factoring in that in their plan, which still involved them winning. I think the management of the timeouts in the fourth was definitely debatable. I think. When Sveta was calling them, possibly was waiting to play too late, a possession too late on them was certainly an issue. you got to go as well, the cold streak from deep for Serbia. I felt that they managed to live with the USA trying to outquick them in terms of making it harder for the US on the offensive end for large parts of it. But they let themselves get too frustrated by their own failings offensively. And those you know, frustrations compounded. So, like, these are small things, but when you're taking on, like, again, the best unit in terms of 1 to 12 uh, depth and quality uh, at the Olympics, you can't afford even the slightest sliver. You give them that, they'll find a way to win. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, they're the core reasons for me. And, uh, like, again, I might have played around with it more, but I would have made way, way more other mistakes, and I assure you the USA would have won by 40 or 50 if I was coaching that Serbian team. So I am not questioning uh, Sveta Pezic on that. Uh, and also, I'm a bit of an Abramovich fanboy, so I'm, you know, rose tinted glasses on that, let's be honest. You know, the, is there other things you'd have done differently? Of course there are. But, you you know, it's in the moment. you got to make the call. And I felt Pezic pitched one of his greatest ever games like and the fact you go well Eddie won might have yeah I mean who did greatest achievement uh, in a single game don't get me wrong would it be his greatest achievement as a coach I think that's actually debatable I think there's lots of so many great examples of what Pezic has done over the years that picking out that as the greatest achievement as a coach would actually be a fight and I'm sure please tell me in the comments what you all think below should actually belong there and so yeah yeah there's there is that uh, so yeah, uh, that, that's the tough part. Now we get to the hopeful part, because I'm not finishing this on a downer. We've seen that it can be done. Like, you look at this roster. Bogey showed he can control the play no matter what number he is. If he's one, two, three, four. The only thing he wasn't really doing was five in terms of positioning. Like, Jokic, the best player in the world. Uh... But like then you go beneath that. Like there's guys who are fringe NBA or Euro League or even like not even some of them aren't aren't even heavy minutes in Euro League, and you go and they found ways to contribute. They found ways to be factors. Like the focus, the unit, and let's not underestimate the size thing. 
but I'm not here to tell Serbia to cherish a moral victory. Be extremely proud of everyone involved in this team. They did everything possible, but it's also okay to be sad. It's okay to be disappointed. And the reason is, well, not the reason is, but my rationale is I support one of the worst football teams in Ireland, UCD. Uh, you know, heck, I'm probably one of the best known fans UCD has. It says an awful lot considering, you know, I ain't exactly famous. And so we're, we're terrible. Like, you're not terrible. We're, we are mediocre. Like, we're in the second tier. We got relegated last year in a pretty comprehensive style. We're not coming back up this year, barring a lot of breaks going our way. But under 28 years, that's kind of, well, 29 seasons for me. That's kind of the way it's been. And um, I still keep going back. I keep going back. I've seen us win one minor trophy in the whole time there. There have been three European trips, one of which was the fair play. I am used to losing being the norm. But my God, I cherish victory and I cherish the shocks and I cherish the unthinkable. And that's what I was feeling watching Serbia last night, that I was seeing the unthinkable, I was seeing the shocks. That I was, and this is, I'm rating this over Spain in 08, which I know for a lot of people is sacrilege. This is the closest I have seen a European side come to beating a full strength USA team. Performance, not just points, performance as well. Everything. This is the best I've ever seen a team play a uh, full strength USA side. And this was against, you know, guys drowning in all stars. Uh, you know, so yeah, phenomenal, brilliant. Be gutted, be upset. But, I'm kind of hopeful for the future, N not just Serbia, uh, although Serbia is kind of funny. Uh, and I'm sure lots of people in Serbia go, we know Serbia is funny, but please, back to basketball. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, but uh, what I really mean is, I look at sort of what's coming through and what's, you know, where fill in needs. It's like I'm really confident one to four. <laughs> it's at five as Jokic and Milutinov get a bit old, is where we need to see the next great Serbian fives. So let's see who those are. Uh, I'm sure Igor Petrovic, my uh, friend who's a Serbian who coaches basketball on Ireland, is going to be telling me all about the fives from Serbia need to be an eye on. And I mean the young guys, just to be clear. I'm talking like you 20 younger here before you all go what? It's like I'm going young here, you know? Because uh, Olympics are four-year cycles. LA is four years away. I expect the Americans to feel the full-strength side. I don't expect LeBron James to be there. I'd be surprised if Curry or KD are there. That doesn't mean they'll be weak, they'll still be loaded. But uh, it's going to be a beatable American side, no matter how good it is. And not just because those guys aren't there, because the rest of the world is catching up. And it's not just Europe. Like, we saw Japan give France a deserved fight of their lives. Like, you know, now France, Japan, I think, are decades away from challenging for, like, you know, gold. But people go, well, yeah, that's easy to say. No, I think they actually will be challenging for gold in a couple of decades. I'm looking at the development there. I'm thinking, they're going to get very, very good. Like, they're going to be a team we talk about a lot. Like, I'll be in my 60s then, because I'm 43 now. But I think I'll be talking about Japan a lot as I'm nearing official retirement in Ireland. Although, I won't get to retire. Like, you know... I don't get to retire. Uh, I'll be working until I'm in the grave. Uh, you know, and I plan on living a very, very long life. But, like, you know, Europe, you kind of go, France, we've seen the ridiculous development of bigs, not just Victor uh, Wembanyama, but, like, you know, they're starting to get it together in the backcourt now in the development as well, so we're starting to see those replacements. And I go, oh, we're not as reliant on golden generations what I'm trying to get to. Like, Germany, obviously, is the example of the production line almost now of talent they've got. Like, it used to be you needed a golden generation to have a chance at gold. Like, basically, Argentina 04. Uh, Fra Spain's many, many great teams. You don't need to have a golden generation anymore. You need to have development and keep plugging through more and more and more and more good guys. It's basically what Canada's doing, by the way. It's why Canada is relevant now and still will be relevant in four years. And I think will be even oddly more relevant in eight years, even though Shea will be 34 then. Uh, because I just go development, development, development. More good players coming through, more talent coming through. And I think, yeah, we are going to see, if not LA, then four years later, in Brisbane, which nothing is Brisbane, but the time is going to suck. Uh, you know, we're going to see a, a European team, or maybe an Asian team, or maybe a South American team, but my goal would say a European team, win gold in the Olympics against an American team that has absolutely no excuses whatsoever. And that's kind of cool. I mean, that's just brilliant. And yeah, it might even be an all-European final if it happens in the semi-finals or earlier, who knows. Uh, but watch out for Canada. They may be down, but they are not out. I'll be doing a video about them soon as well. But uh, for now, that's that, and thank you all for watching, and uh, as you can tell, I'm uh, 
a little a little mixed feelings over this but listen proud of what Serbia did you really really did move me emotionally to unreal degrees and um, I'll see you all at Eurobasket uh, you know I'll be watching obviously the bronze game as well but I'll see a lot of the fans from Serbia at Eurobasket next year and until then uh, like I said earlier in the video please subscribe keep getting those that traffic up and if you haven't uh, noticed we have merch the link is below uh, this isn't our merch but I should probably be wearing it but most of it's actually in the wash the stuff I'm currently doing because I'm a bit behind on laundry oh well uh, anyway catch you all later